Have you ever been in a conversation where you can tell the other person isn't listening? It happens all the time. We all need to grow in our listening skills, especially when it comes to faith-based conversations. Jesus had this teaching. He'd often say, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Jesus can actually teach us how to listen to him and to others so that people become curious about who he is. Ears to Speak is about inspiring spiritual curiosity through listening. We're your hosts, Madison Bertunis and Jessica Leipvik. You might be entering into the next couple months dreading the holidays, feeling like this is going to be something out of a Clark Griswold movie, My Family Vacation, where there's drama and arguments and passive aggressive weirdness, not to mention overspending and overscheduling. Well, friends, we feel you. We feel your pain and we know how stressful Thanksgiving and the holidays, Christmas and New Year's can be. So today on the podcast, we are talking with Alexandra Kirkendall about her new book, Loving My Actual Christmas. If you're like Madison and myself, you just need some help navigating family dynamics with grace and love to be able to listen to people instead of jump down their throats when they say something you don't like or agree with. So we hope that today you find some real practical insights on how to simplify and live curiously, and to listen well to people so that they would actually experience the love of Jesus through you. We're doing a fun book giveaway, so you can check out Ears to Speak on Instagram or on Facebook and pop a couple entries in there. We would love to get you hooked up with some of the fun little things we've put together for this. So Merry Christmas and enjoy listening. Alex, thanks so much for joining us on the Ears to Speak podcast today. And let me just say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thanks for having me. (laughs) You are welcome. I know it might feel a little strange to our listeners to hear about Christmas at the end of October, but we really wanted to invite Alex on the podcast today because she's written this amazing book called Loving My Actual Christmas, An Experiment in Relishing the Season. So we wanted to be able to get this into your hands before Christmas starts so you can actually have the kind of Christmas that, frankly, all of us long for, that's peaceful, that really focuses on Jesus and helps us to love our family instead of wanting to strangle them with Christmas lights. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yes. So, Alex, um, where did your inspiration from this book come from? Tell me a little bit about what prompted you to write it. Well, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago, I was working at Moffs International Mm -hmm. and I took some time off for Christmas, like a lot of people did in the office. And I came home back to the office after Christmas break and people asked me a really innocent question. It's kind of similar to how are you? It was, how was your Christmas? Right. And I could not get the word out fine or Mm. good. Christmas had stressed me out so much that I hated it. In wow. my mind, I thought I'd be okay if we never did that again. So you like, were kind of I happy to get back to work. You were like the office. I was is happy calmer. to be done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had I had four kids. My right. youngest was a toddler. So mm-hmm. right there, my life was kind of <laughs> stressful. Yeah. And then all of the extras of Christmas, I mean, yeah. it threw my kids into this total meltdown mode. Yeah. I had house guests because we had family visiting from out of town, Mm -hmm. the stress of money and overspending was part of it. So I said, you know, other than the baby in the manger, I could do away with this holiday. Right. And saying that I thought there's something wrong here. I need to do something different. Yeah. So I decided that I was going to start doing Christmas a little different. So for the next few years I did, I made some Mm -hmm. changes and I started talking to other women about it. And I realized this is a pretty common feeling. Yeah. So I wrote a book about it. That's awesome. Uh, You had previously written a book called Loving My Actual Life. And I mm -hmm. loved that book because it was, it's just one of the things I appreciate about your writing is it's so practical and down to earth. I mean, this is every woman who's trying to not scarf down the entire bowl of M&Ms and find (laughs) space in her schedule to work out. It's the 
woman who's really looking at Pinterest saying, I can't be that. I don't want to be that, but I, I feel like I, that's what's around me. So that's great. So you break up the book by the Advent season. So for people who aren't familiar with the practice of Advent, tell, tell me a little bit about what that is and then how you decided to kind of tackle those themes. Sure. Advent is something that some churches really practice yeah. um, and other churches don't. It kind of depends on if you come from a liturgical tradition. And right. for people who don't know what that is, that just means that over the course of the year, over 12 months, the church celebrates different markers mm-hmm. in kind of understanding who God is and who Jesus is. Mm-hmm. And so Advent is the period in the church where we are waiting for the baby to arrive. Mm-hmm. And as a woman who's been pregnant four times, <laughs> I know what waiting for the baby to arrive is like. Yeah. It's full of hope. Mm-hmm. But it can also be a really stressful time. It can be a scary time. Yeah. But really what's intended in that is to wait. And then after Advent is the Christmas tide or the what we call the 12 days of Christmas. Yeah. Where traditionally Christmas has really been celebrated more than just on the 25th, but mm-hmm. on this like extended period of time. Yeah. And so part of my experiment was to look at that and say, okay, you know, the church has some traditions for a reason. Maybe I should apply a little bit of that practice into my actual Christmas in my modern day circumstances. Right. So Advent has a theme every week. And so I took those themes and tried to incorporate them into the time leading up to the 25th. Mm -hmm. And then I really tried to slow down and celebrate Christmas for a good period of time after the 25th. Okay. That's really cool. I love that you brought in the liturgical calendar. I grew up Presbyterian, so stained glass and the velvet pews. I mean, I loved all of it. I just felt like it was beautiful and it helped me feel like I was joining in with something that Christians for literally centuries had been practicing. So I think this theme of hope, love, joy, and peace leading up to the weeks of Christmas are just really profound ways to kind of shape how you think about and entering into the season. Thinking about that, you provide a lot of practical examples about how to eliminate stress from your schedule. Two of the things I wanted to touch on, I really think that are helpful for our listeners who are trying to inspire spiritual curiosity through listening is the practice of simplicity. So the two things I wanted to talk about is your appendix on the power of no thank you and then gift giving on a budget. So it is hard to say no to people, especially to fun things. So, I mean, I'm always up for a party, but then, (laughs) but then when there's too much, I crash and I'm cranky with everyone around me. So especially at Christmas, I know for me, my motor just goes of like, we should go to the Nutcracker and we should go to this special gingerbread house thing. And my friend is having a party and boy, that cookie exchange sounds fun. And the Christmas program at school. So talk to me about being gracious and inspiring spiritual curiosity through saying no and being gracious that way. Sure. I think this is why it's a really good time to be talking about this at the end of October, Mm -hmm. because it's about week two of December that we start pulling our hair out and saying, yes, I hate this. I've committed to too much. Yes. So before we get into that crazy to really be thinking about what do I want to remember a year from now Mm. about this Christmas? And what do I want to remember 10 years from now? That's helpful. And what do I want the people around me to remember a year from now, 10 years from now? Because often as women, we are the ones who are making Christmas happen for the people around us. Yes. You're not seeing a lot of dudes at Target early Saturday Mm -hmm. mornings, picking out the special ornaments at the, I mean, like, let's just be real about that. (laughs) Right. They might be into like the exterior lights, but in general, we make all the special touches happen. And but we also have control over the schedule and yes. the calendar a little bit. Yep. So I start the book talking about expectations. Mm-hmm. The first week of Advent is really, the theme is hope. Mm-hmm. But some churches use the word expectation. Mm. And it's a good time to be thinking about, and really even earlier than that, what are my expectations for this season? And then ask the people around you, what are your expectations? Oh, that's good. And that. It can be a scary conversation. Yeah. How so? Tell tell me. 
If Why you, scary? well, especially with extended family, ah. if you know what the answer is going to be and you're feeling like mm, this is the year where things might have to be different, right? you know, you're going into a hard conversation, Yeah, but it's better to get it out on the table and say, mm-hmm. this is what mm-hmm. I expect. This is what you expect. How can we find some middle ground earlier rather yeah. than as I say in the book on December 24th is you're driving <laughs> to church and you're yelling at your husband that you don't want tomorrow to go the way that it, it's going to go down. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Better to get it done now. Yeah. Pull that bandaid so, off. So, right. <laughs> my, my suggestion to people as far as kind of managing the schedule, especially if you have kids mm-hmm. is to pick three big things, activities, whatever Mm -hmm. they might be for every family, it's going to be different. Three big things that you want to add to your schedule in December between the first and the 25th. Yeah. That averages out to about one activity a week. Yeah. So you mentioned the nutcracker. That was something I did last year with my, two of my girls and my mom. Cool. That was one of my major things. And then once you get those big things on the calendar, you can assess the smaller things and sure. decide, do we have time for this or is this going to throw us over the edge? Yeah. But you're putting the things on the calendar first that are the ones you want to remember a year from now, 10 years from right. now. Right. Yeah. So you're, you're not walking away from the nutcrackers so exhausted because you've done the, the sledding party, you've done the school pageant, whatever, that it, that it's actually a good memory instead of Boy, I wish we had just stayed home in our pajamas and watched Charlie Brown on Netflix. Yeah. Right. And your kids aren't falling asleep during the matinee <laughs> because you stayed up the night before and you're thinking, I spent a lot of money on these right. tickets, you know. Right, right, right. And yeah. then the anger and the resentment starts to all the in. all the feelings. All those great Yuletide <laughs> <Right. pride> feelings. <laughs> right. Yeah. That we are wanting to say this year Christmas can be different. Yeah. So how do you talk to people about that? Because I'm thinking of people who maybe don't focus on Jesus as the reason for Christmas. It's an exciting holiday for lots of other reasons, but that's not what they're focused on. So how do you think that can help people talk about Christmas in a spiritually intriguing way to folks who are caught up in the schedule, who are going into debt because they're spending so much money on travel or gifts? How can they talk about their schedule in a way that or their finances in a way that doesn't sound like snooty and self-righteous, but Mm -hmm. hey, we really are trying to make a change this year. I think to to be really honest and and you can say it in a pot with a positive spin and Mm. say, especially if you have kids, listen, I really want to set us up for success Mm, this year. Let's just say you're talking to grandparents. Let's just use that as an example, because that's often the attention. Sure. I want to set us up for success to have a few really great memories from Mm. this Christmas season Mm -hmm. for my kids and you. We want the kids to remember a great time. So I've learned from the last few years Mm. that if we over schedule and we over commit, then they're exhausted and things don't go as well. Yeah. So here are some things that I think would help. Mm. So it could be something around travel. It could be something about Arriving in the afternoon instead of 10 o'clock on Saturday morning or Christmas yeah, morning because yeah. you want the kids to sleep in or have a nap. So kind of think what honestly is going to contribute to everyone being set up for success and kind of take it from that angle. Yeah. And then say, okay, so given those parameters, what would you like us to do? Mm, what would you mm-hmm. and help them enter into the conversation so that you're not just coming in as the Christmas Nazi and saying, sure. you know what? I'm laying down the law and this. this year is going to be different. Yeah. yeah. That's really helpful. And it's, I think it's one of the challenging things about Christmas is everyone has expectations and We've tried to do that with my family to bring that conversation up. What are your expectations for the holiday? And and it's been kind of funny because they'll say things like, what are you talking about? We don't have any expectations. Like we just want to, you know, be with the kids and have fun. And, but then once you ask that question, it slowly comes out of, we would love to go to evening service, the candlelight service, or I really look forward to that special quiche that you make for Christmas day or whatever. So I think it's a good gut check for people who follow Jesus, who don't follow Jesus. Of These are the things my heart 
longs for and gets excited about when I think about Christmas that make it feel like a holiday and a tradition and a time of love and peace. So yeah, that's good. How about for like some of those casual conversations with neighbors or parents at school or friends, because we're going to the holiday parties and people ask us that question. What are you guys doing for Christmas? What are you doing for the holidays? You know, maybe, maybe there's folks who celebrate Hanukkah and Jewish folks aren't immune to this busy holiday season either. It gets pretty pretty full for most people. So how would you talk with somebody who you maybe have more of a casual relationship outside of the family circle about how you're trying to shape your Christmas? For me, I never want to force spiritual conversation. Yeah. Right. Yep. Like we do think that, and I think it's true that people are open to the Christmas story because Christmas as a holiday is so culturally accepted. Right. You can walk into the mall and there are Christmas trees. Yeah. Now I know a lot of people feel like, but there's no Christ in Christmas. But I do think that the fact that people are open to the holiday itself opens Mm -hmm. the door a little bit. Absolutely. Conversation. But I never want to force it. Like when somebody says happy holidays to me, I'm not going to come back to them with an angry, no, Merry (laughs) Christmas, dang it. Yeah. You know, like, so the same is true with just, you know, what are you doing over Christmas? I think it's fine to say we're going to go to our candlelight service at church. But I think a, a bigger, more general approach is to say, you know, I'm really wanting to be intentional Mm. about how we celebrate. Yeah. And then if people ask questions, then you can get a little deeper into that. But I just don't want to force the spiritual conversation. Sure. Yeah. I think intentionality is a great word because it's just kind of a buzzword today anyways. I want to be mindful. I want to be intentional. And so to be able to say something about I'm really trying to set my family up for success this Christmas by choosing intentionally what we do and what we don't do. I mean, I think if I was having a conversation with you and I'm a busy person that's stressed out, I would want to ask more about what do you mean by that? Like, how are you setting up your family for success? And how how did you come to that decision? And like you said, you don't want to force the conversation. But I think the ways that we choose our words, just like you positioned it to the grandparents of, hey, we're trying to set ourselves up for success. We can be mindful in what kind of answers we're giving to the folks as we're out shoveling the driveway or bumping into friends at a Starbucks or things like that. So we want those conversations to come naturally and to not be forced and not be that weirdo that is like, you can't say happy holidays to me because, <laughs> you know, Christmas is about right, Christ. Right, because I'm in... None of us want to be that person. And, you know, I will say, if we are living our Christmas in a way that we truly are enjoying it, then we give off the vibe as Christians that Christmas is something to celebrate and not something to resent. Yes. So if we're joining our friends in complaining about Christmas, they're going to wonder why this is a Christian holiday. Sure. 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 Right. Yep. But if we are living it in a way where we are experiencing joy and mm-hmm. peace and love and mm-hmm. hope, because we are remembering that this is the time that we celebrate God with us, Emmanuel, yeah. that we are celebrating that baby in the manger, we don't have to use those words. Yeah. We can just express how much this season gives us peace. And yeah. that is going to be countercultural Absolutely. because everybody else feels like yeah. the season is stressful. Yeah, I think that is such a great example of we do live spiritually curious lives when we're living it, not just saying it, but actually living it and saying, I just had the greatest time last night with my daughters reading Christmas books. And we decided to skip the big thing because we realized it wasn't going to bring us peace this holiday season and wasn't going to help us Mm -hmm. focus on what's the most important. So Yeah, that's really great. I'm going to switch topics now on to this simplicity when it comes to finances, because I know for me personally, I can get really wrapped up into, I love giving gifts. And so it can always feel like, oh, I just want to find that one more special thing or, oh gosh, this is on sale. And, you know, I want to get those deals because I want to live simply. I remember a couple of years ago, my husband and I made the insane mistake of going to Walmart the day after Thanksgiving. And it, it was like mob mentality. It was insane. And instead of having a feeling of like, I want to live simply so I can live generously, it was this, 
how can I get as much as I can for as cheap as I can? And I think on some level that's okay. Like we want to save money, but you have some really good tips as well about even teaching your family and kids about how do you live simply, you know, in your finances around Christmas? Because I know a lot of people struggle with this too. We're trying to make Christmas special. And so as Americans, we often think more is better, Mm -hmm. right? And I'll admit I am a Black Friday shopper. Yeah. But I go in with a list. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you're trying to limit spending, I would say making a list on any kind of shopping trip between now and Christmas is going to be helpful. Yep. So writing things down about what you're going to give someone and planning ahead will keep you from buying that. One more toy, one more sure. sweater, one more right. stocking stuff. But really to start with the end in mind, mm-hmm. this is kind of like, what do I want to remember a year from now, right. 10 years from now? Do I want to remember that credit card bill that no. sent me into card? I think what we want is that when that credit card bill arrives in January, we want to feel good about it. Yeah. And for every family, that number, that bottom line number is sure. going to be different. Yeah. But If you go into the holiday with that bottom line number in mind, then you can plan accordingly. So decide now at the end of October. And if you share your money with somebody else, Mm -hmm. include them in that decision and say, what do we want to spend? And then I have a list at the back of the book that is a brainstorming list, but you're going to have things that are unique to you too, that are extras that we tend to spend over the holidays that sometimes we don't think about. Right. Like Christmas. We often think about the cost of the card and we forget about the postage. Or even the the time investment, the time investment of taking the pictures, getting your family dressed up, getting to a cool location, coming up with the the fun and unique thing that people are going to laugh at when they Mm -hmm. open the card. Yeah, it's, it adds up. My, my boys love the Lego advent calendar, which is about $50 a pop. And when we hit November, we're like, Oh yeah, that's right. They, they always want that every year. So we should plan to just get that Lego advent calendar and, you know, not go out to eat as much in this month or whatever. So planning. Right. Every family's Mm going to have different extras. Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah, that's helpful. I know that for for us in years past, there's been times where $20 was a stretch to buy mm-hmm. gifts and other years where we had more financial flexibility. And so I think it's great that you just give some good principles of no matter what your budget is, just stick to it and make a budget in the first place so that you're not freaking out and stressed out about what comes in January and how depressed you are with the bank account. I think that can come with with travel and families too, because I know for us this year, there's been a lot of changes in our family. So we have folks that live all over the country. My in-laws just sold their family home and moved into a retirement cottage. So they live in upstate New York. We live in Kansas. We have two kids. So plane tickets are a lot. Driving three days cross country is taxing that time of year in a busy time of year anyways. And so we've had to kind of just be honest with them to say, listen, we're just not going to be able to travel this year. That's going to be too costly time-wise and financially. But I'm glad we're having those conversations now just to say, all right, we're going to need to do some things a little differently than we have in years past. Well, that's living, loving your actual Christmas. I mean, it's within your actual circumstances. Here's our new reality. Yeah. We live far away from each other. We have a family this size. We can't afford to fly at Christmas. But then being able to talk within that mm-hmm. and believe the best in the other person right? and say, okay, so given your expectation that maybe that it is that we spend Christmas together, how can we make that happen? Yeah. We share the cost of us flying out. You come here. Right. We put it off until February when tickets sure. are less expensive or yep. whatever it is. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That kind of brings us to the other thing I wanted to talk about was navigating family relationships and a posture of grace. So, you know, not everybody has families that follow Jesus. And and even, I mean, frankly, even if you do have families that follow Jesus, it can just be fraught when you have those conversations because people have expectations. So talk a little bit about the posture of grace with people at Christmas time, because I think that's a, that's a huge one. And you do touch on listening as well. Like what can you do to kind of build bridges with folks? 
that maybe you don't even necessarily want to build a bridge to. <laughs> right. Well, here's the truth. At Christmas, we often are with people that we avoid the yeah. whole rest of the year, yeah. right? But it's yep. tradition that the extended family gets together and everybody is together. Mm-hmm. And, and you miserable together. Let's just, yeah. Right. Let's just be miserable together. <laughs> <laughs> You're forced to have conversations with people that maybe you have been able to avoid the mm-hmm. rest of the year. And you don't want to go into them being that cranky, angry person. And yet, you know that there are some triggers that might happen. Mm -hmm. So whether it's your older brother tends to talk down to you because he still sees you as the baby or your cousin has a different political view than you and you know, it's going to come up and she's going to be kind of intentionally pushing buttons for you. Know ahead of time and verbalize to somebody who's going to be an ally for you Mm. in that room, in Mm -hmm. that moment, whether it's your spouse or your sibling or your mom Mm -hmm. and say, listen, I want to approach this person with a posture of love Mm -hmm. and grace. And if you see me starting to get a little Mm -hmm. bit testy, Mm -hmm. let's have a code word or let's have a way that I remove myself from the situation because I don't want to regret what I say over the holidays. I want to be, thankful for loving that person and having a posture of grace. Yeah. And I think it is recalibrating our brains every time we go into a conversation with someone who we know is going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we forget past hurts. That's right. But we go with forgiveness Mm -hmm. as the leading and then try not to put ourselves in the same position that we've maybe been in in the past for us to go down some bad roads. Right. That is really smart. And again, it's being mindful of your own feelings and your past and intentional to say, because I love this person and because I love Jesus, I want to preserve relationships. I want to build trust. I want to listen to them. I want to try and assume the best. I want to try and have fun. I think that can be one of the biggest things we do to just help people kind of say, huh, We didn't go there. We didn't get into that argument. We didn't have that awkward Mm -hmm. moment for them to see something is something is different about you. And again, that comes back to I'm living out the values of my faith during this holiday season of of hope. I hope we're going to have a good time together. I hope it's going to be a peaceful time where we experience joy and love. And really, those those things speak so much louder than anything that we could say to them that would hope them to convince, you know, convince them otherwise. Well, remembering that Christ came for all of us Mm -hmm. I mean, this is Christmas and we're remembering that God came as a person and I am a sinner saved by grace. Mm -hmm. And when we walk into a situation where we have that gratitude of the grace that we've received and we have on the forefront of our minds, that we are no better than anybody else, yep. but that we are a sinner saved by grace, we are mm-hmm. more likely to extend grace naturally yeah. to the people around us. Yeah. And so to remember our own sinfulness, mm-hmm. <laughs> really, I mean, yeah. that, that sounds kind of harsh, but but to remember that we receive grace and that's the equalizer. We're all sinners. And so to walk into a situation and maybe we don't agree with someone, yeah. but if we remember our own posture of receiving grace every right. day, then we're going to be more likely to extend grace to others. Yeah, that is so great. And I think that's a good thing to kind of leave our listeners with of being grateful for what Jesus has done for us so that we can extend that love and grace to others. So that's really excellent. And that's what I'm going to be praying for for myself this year as we navigate some different family dynamics. And for the people that are listening to this podcast, I really hope that everyone who's kind of downloaded and listened into this conversation with Alexandra has felt like some measure of hope that they can go into this December feeling like I can begin to build bridges and get along with this person, or I can build, build trust with my spouse by sitting down and looking at a budget and saying, I want to honor you. I want to honor what God's given us. So let's try and have a peaceful season instead of a, stressful season. So yeah, Alex, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and your insights from this book with um, our podcast listeners. We're going to do a fun giveaway of your book. And so if you guys like 
our Facebook page or check us out on Instagram. You can check there for details at Ears to Speak on either of those platforms. Alex, thank you so much. We really appreciate everything you've shared today. Yes, thank you for having me and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you for listening to Ears to Speak today. If you liked what you heard, please go and subscribe to our podcast, review it, share it with a friend, and we would love it. Show us some love. And if you want to get in contact with us, if you have any questions about the show, just want to drop us an encouraging note or... A critical note. A critical note. We (laughs) receive those too. (laughs) We also receive cookies. You can send us an email at connections at stonecroft.org. If you want to find out more resources about how to share your faith, you can go to stonecroft.org and check that out as well. Thank you so much for listening today, and we're looking forward to connecting with you again. Thank you.